When you're harvesting your honey, have you ever noticed different colors of honey and in sometimes the same frame? Yesterday, when I made you guys a video and I was working on this hive right here, I pulled out a frame that was extremely dark. Not all of it, but right in the middle, it was so dark. And it almost kept me up at night last night because I kept thinking, I want that honey. I love dark honey. We have some farmers around here that plant buckwheat and it makes a really dark, almost like molasses honey. And I thought, is it possible that my bees found that and that some of that is very dark? I'm gonna to have to be strategic. You guys are gonna to have to stay with me for the whole video because some of the frames I think are more light. So what I'm gonna to try to do is harvest the dark frames separately than the light frames. Now, I don't know for sure if the honey is dark or if this, the wax around it is dark. That can be kind of, you know, uh, misleading, but I'm going to try to harvest it, see if we can get some different flavors, different colors from the same super. Let's get to work. I'm going to be using a lot of burlap today, particularly a sheet of it as I move the super frames into this empty box here and take it back to the harvest room. But I want to make sure no robber bees are going to sniff it out, so I'm going to lay burlap over it. But look at, talking about burlap, look at this. This is from two or three inspections ago. I've been using this same big piece of burlap and just relighting it. You talk about efficient, this stuff is crazy to use in your smoker. And I really love it so much. I love that screen uh, that somebody gave me to try out. I love that. So we're gonna light this uh, piece of burlap. We're not gonna be in the hive a lot, not going deep. We're just gonna pull some frames out, brush bees off. So I love this burlap. I'll leave a link in the description below if you need some food grade quality burlap for smoker fuel. Every Thursday night at 7 p.m. I have a live stream, 7 p.m. Central Time. Would love for you to join me. We'll always have a good time, a lot of questions. Check it out. Here's the link right here. I won't be using uh, a bee jacket today. My work here is pretty minimal and no gloves either. We're hoping that everything will go well. Bobblehead David is saying be sure and subscribe. So let's start by looking at uh, the one closest to the wall. So we'll pull the ones that are dark off of this uh, super first. Again, just in case you didn't see my last video, uh, this hive has two deeps and it had three honey supers on it. I pulled one honey super off and gave it to another hive that needed a little uh, food resources. And so now we're down to two honey supers on here and we really don't need to go through the winter with that much space on top. Now see, this isn't really dark. That's not the dark color that I saw yesterday, so let's keep looking. I'll harvest that. I mean, I I'm gonna harvest all of these uh, frames here, but I wanna harvest, I wanna target harvest the dark ones first. Let's see what this one looks like. Okay, now if you can get the sun behind it, you can kind of tell it's darker in the middle or darker in the lower part, lighter. But that's still not the darkest one that I saw. Let's keep looking. Was it this one? Maybe toward the middle? Can't remember for sure. Did I dream that? No, look, that's dark. There we go. Look how dark that is. Yeah. And if you hold it up to the light, you can't see through it. So I have an, I have an idea that that's really dark honey. So let's brush these bees off. And then we'll put it over on the honey super over on the golf cart. Bee brush come in, comes in really handy when you're trying to just to brush uh, bees off of frames like this. I'll just bring it over here, put it there. And to keep robber bees from finding it, we'll lay our burlap over it. These, these sheets of burlap are so handy. All right, good. Take a look at the next one. I hope it's a dark one too. Now, I'm not a big consumer of honey. Um, I eat a lot more honey than most. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, that is so dark. Wow. That is so dark. Yeah, you hold it up to the sun. You can't even see through it. But I do like honey. I like honey in my coffee. I like honey on some toast. Sometimes I've been known just to take a teaspoon of honey here and there just because I can. Now, if you're a backyard beekeeper, a simple way to pull off 
frames like this is just brush bees off like I'm showing you here. You just brush them back down into the super like that and get them off one frame at a time. Now I used to have a lot of honey equipment because I used to try to make a living off honey. So that's when you have more trucks and bobcats and uh, automated equipment, um, all kind of things that helps, um, helps you harvest your super after super. But just taking off a super or two or 10 supers or less a year, you don't need a lot of equipment. I'm gonna put the dark ones over here, I think. And where did all this dark honey come from? And is it dark? That's gonna be the real thing that we're gonna to have to take a test and say, you know, if we harvest it, is it gonna be dark honey or is the wax just kind of dark? I'm saying dark honey. I could be fooled though. Isn't it therapeutic just to watch somebody brush bees off of a frame like this? That's very therapeutic. Come on, don't, tell me that. It's, leave a comment if that's really therapeutic for you to watch. Get off my frame, little bee. Go find someplace else to play. Yeah, I would never overwinter with two supers on. I, I don't feel comfortable having that much space on the hive. I just feel like the space needs to be minimal so that when the bees go through winter, you know, they're not trying to keep two deeps and two supers um, managed. They're not gonna, they're gonna be clustered below all of that. So they're not gonna keep it heated at all, you know? So that's one of the things that I feel that I need to get this into just two deeps and only one super. So in my last video, I showed you how I take one super off and gave it to another hive. We didn't even use any newspaper. They didn't fight, they were glad to get it. You think that's dark? I think so. I've been playing with bees since I, I don't know, I think 27 years now I've been a beekeeper. It's a long time in it. And I've been playing with bees and enjoying just learning so much about bees. And like I shared in, in my last videos, one of the reasons I've never burned out on beekeeping is because I've, I just enjoy learning about bees so much. I mean, it's just so cool to learn about bees. Look at that. Look at those little queen cups right there. Nothing in them, just little queen cups. I think it's important that we realize that we don't have to be perfect beekeepers. We don't have to know everything to get started. We learn as we go a lot of times. Having a good background helps us. And what I mean by a good background, a good background in basic beekeeping. You know, you need to know the basics before you start. You gotta take a beekeeping class, get the basics down. Yeah, you can learn basic beekeeping as you go, but getting a little bit ahead of the game is gonna be so helpful for you. Uh, get in that first hive next spring, and if you've never kept bees, you've never taken a class, you never learned much about bees, then it can be very uh, shocking. It can be a wake-up call. You can kind of be overwhelmed by the number of things that you thought you knew or you thought you didn't have to know. <laughs> and all at once you're like, oh no, what is that? What do I need to do now? And I understand that's the way I was when I first started. But after you keep bees a while, you know, it's just like any other thing, you, you learn a lot about bees and then all at once you understand them better. Hear that train about a mile away, a train that's south of my property here. There we go. One, two, three. Yep, get out of there, bee. I like, I like the burlap tremendously. It keeps flies out. Did you see that fly leave? Just keeps any old little bug out of there. Stay out of my honey bugs. Now it's getting a little bit lighter in color, I think, over here. Uh, we got three left, so we must have seven over there. And I like doing this. It's a, not a bad day. 
It's pushing about 85 degrees today. Isn't that funny? Usually, I mean, we have some record uh, hot temperatures this week, I think. It's been, you know, really warm for October. But it's going to cool off this weekend. Boy, I have an event scheduled for Saturday. And wow, I think there's a low of 44 degrees Fahrenheit on Saturday. Wow. That's going to be a cold snap for sure. The bees are going to be clustering. So I'm trying to get a bunch of stuff done to get my bees ready for winter. I mean, I'll, I'll have some more days maybe, but not many. Yeah, that stuff. Ow. Ooh. Is that a bee sting? No, it's just a sharp corner right there on that piece of wood. Wow. Look at that. Getting a little bit lighter in color now. Definitely. I'm going to go ahead and take the ones against the wall. Uh, they don't have as much. This is a light one. This I already took the one against the wall, but there's one here against the wall. They don't have much in them against the wall, usually on the wall side. But I'm going to go ahead and take it because I want to keep 10, 10. You know, I don't want to have eight frames out there and two somewhere else. It just helps me keep, keep track of everything. You have to have a, a strong thumb to hold everything by one hand. I see a small high beetle I got to kill. Went down in a hole there. There it is. Hmm. I tell you what, there's a lot of pleasurable things in life and in beekeeping, but one of the most pleasurable things is killing a small high beetle. Now right, we got one more against the wall. Let's see what it looks like. It's pretty propolized in there. I do have to say that Honeybees make a great, great thing to film. I love filming honeybees. It's just a hoot. Look at that. It's a little bit of honey on this side, um, not much else around it. And on the wall side, bone dry, not much at all in there. Yeah, that's got, uh, it's got a little bit of honey on it, but not much at all on this other side here. All right, so here's the last one now going in. And that'll give us a 10 that we need. Ooh, boy, that's tight. I got some bees and flies looking at it, so let's put our cloth back on it. Put our burlap on it to cover it up. Look at that. Ah, now we get to go back to the harvest room and play with it. See how many dark frames we get. Be sure and subscribe. We still got a lot of work to do, but I'd like you to follow me on my YouTube channel here. Bobblehead David, please subscribe. All right, all we need to do now is get this super off and get the top cover on. And then we're gonna start feeding it um, my feeding additives that build up some bees of winter physiology. If they don't have a good store of them already, they will when I start feeding them. And so we'll get that underway here in a little bit. But today we're just getting the, the hive configured in such a way where they go through the winter with just this super on. Got a little bit of uh, some burr comb up here. I'm using my smoke to kind of get bees off of the wax that I'd like to smooth down a little bit. It's got a little bit of honey in it and I am getting torn up by the noceum bugs again today. One of the reasons I like wearing a suit. It's not bad, I got most of the big parts out. Yeah, the top cover fit on that nicely now. Watch out bees. Let's take this super back home. All right, we got our 10 frames ready to be extracted. So follow me along. Let's see what we can do to get some black, darker honey out of this thing. Let's take it into the shop. Oh, oh, <laughs> forgot how heavy these are. Well, I'll tell you what, that was one heavy, heavy, heavy super. Wow. Now, I didn't have enough time today to go ahead and finish up extracting it. That's going to be in tomorrow's video. So be sure and watch my next video after that, this one. And that way you'll be able to see if that honey is actually dark 
or if it's light and the wax fooled us. That's going to be a good video for you coming up. Sherry and I appreciate so much you guys are buying up our book, Backyard Beekeeping, everything you need to know to start your first dive. So if you're starting beekeeping next year or next spring, great little book to get you started. And it is a book that Sherry and I wrote together. Sometimes people think I wrote it. Actually, Sherry wrote half and I wrote the other half. So uh, it's a great book. And if you buy it from our website, you'll get an autographed copy of it. Buy it off Amazon, you won't, but we'll autograph it. I'll leave a link in the description below that you can get a copy of our book purchased off our website. Now, if you want to watch another great video where I harvested some honey, showing you how to do it, I uh, got a great video for that. Gotten over a million views on this video right here. It's going to be right here. It's an old video. You'll get to see a younger me. I'll see you over there.